Hydraulic conductivity is an important property governing the flow of water through porous media, through aquifers. In order to understand how hydraulic conductivity works, what I'd like to do is take a very close-up view of flow through porous media. This is a scale bar here. This is a, a tenth of a millimeter. So this overall region is probably about one millimeter across. And what we're looking at is a photomicrograph, or at least an image that's derived from a photomicrograph. So we take a piece of porous media and we slice it very thinly, and we trace out the solid materials and the pores. And if we do that, this pink material, or this pink region, is the pore space. And so when we have flow through a porous media, we have flow through this complicated geometry of pore space. And so as it turns out, we can analyze that. If we can understand, if we can determine what this geometry is, then we can analyze it. We can put a finite element mesh on it. Uh, this, is a, this is an example of that kind of a mesh. And we have equations on each one of these uh, intersections, and we can solve that. It's a big, fairly complicated problem. And if we do that, we can determine the hydraulic head. So this problem consists of a boundary here on this side where we fix the hydraulic head at one value and a boundary here at this other side where we fix the head at a smaller value. And then on these sides, we're saying that there's no flow. And if we do that, then the hydraulic head distribution within this pore structure is shown by the colors. And you can see it, it generally goes from high hydraulic head on the right to lower hydraulic head on the left. Um, but the boundaries from one color to another uh, is pretty complicated. Um, it's not a, a nice smooth transition. So, I mean, for example, if we look at the transition from uh, red to green, it's right there and right there. But from red to green, it's fairly broad transition right there. Here it's pretty sharp and it's fairly broad over here. Okay, so just within this small region we have a pretty complicated distribution of the hydraulic or of the, um, the hydraulic head. And so if we look at what the flow paths are, and basically what we're doing now is taking the hydraulic head distribution and going perpendicular to the head contours, and we say that's the flow direction, and then we trace a particle through that flow path or through that flow field, and we get lines like this. So one particle that starts out right here would go along this path. And if we started out just a short distance away, it would take a much different path, something like this, perhaps. Okay, and there would be many other paths that would be taken depending upon the starting point. So it's really a very complicated geometry of flow uh, and a complicated distribution of hydraulic head. Well, that's okay. If what we're interested in is understanding how the flow works at the millimeter scale, we can do it. There are tools for doing analysis like I show here. We have to know what the specific geometry of the pore structure is, and as it turns out, we can do that in some cases. It's possible to use um, X-ray CT scanners like medical imaging uh, systems to come up with a, a geometry of the pores. It's expensive, um, and but it's possible to do. Okay, so the problem is though that that would only work for a millimeter or maybe a, maybe a few millimeters. But if we wanted to, to analyze the something at the scale of an aquifer, we can't do it. And so the strategy then is to recognize that we have a system like this. On on in bulk, there's a certain flow that goes through this overall system. If we take the the average flow uh, over this region um, and the average head drop from here to here, then we might say that there's a head right here at this end and a head right here at that end. And we could determine the total flow. Okay, so then the thought process is, well, what if I had 
just a region here that's uniform. Just a uniform block and I apply the same head on this block as I did on this block up here and the same here as I did here. And then I adjust the resistance to flow in here so that the flow through this block here is the same as the flow that I have uh, through this complicated but more realistic geometry. Okay, so I adjust the resistance to flow and then I have essentially a similar situation. If I take this as a rectangular block and if I don't really look at these details in here, if I just, if those are obscured to me and all I know is the flow rate here and the flow rate here and the head drop, then I can just give this block a property so that these the head drop and the flows are the same. Okay, well that's the that's how you come up with a justification for hydraulic connectivity. Hydraulic connectivity will be the property that allows us to match the head gradient and the flow. And that's because we have Darcy's law here where we have the, the head gradient and the flux. If we wanted to get the volumetric flow, we would just multiply this flux here by this cross-sectional area. And the key thing to recognize is that hydraulic connectivity appears there and given a hydraulic head gradient, the hydraulic connectivity is what we adjust to get a specific value of, of flow through this system. Okay, But it's, it's really an average resistance to flow that's mimicking this much more complicated system. Okay, so hydraulic connectivity, that's the property that's uh, that were of interest here. Uh, and so the place where hydraulic connectivity appears is here in Darcy's Law. And so if we are looking for a definition of hydraulic connectivity, we should get it from Darcy's Law. And so if we just solve Darcy's Law for hydraulic connectivity, we get this. And what that tells us, there would be a minus sign in there, but I don't really care about the minus sign, so I'll just leave it off. What this says is that hydraulic connectivity is the flux that we get through the porous media per unit head gradient that we apply to it. So that's, I think, the best definition of hydraulic connectivity, the flux through a porous media per unit head gradient. What we can see is that this head gradient is um, dimensionless and the flux here, the volumetric flux has units of length per time. So that means that hydraulic connectivity must have units of length per time. So we might think of it in terms of meters per second, feet per day, meters per day, something like that, uh, a length per time. Now there's another property that I want to point out, and that's called the transmissivity. And transmissivity, that applies to a layer. So if we have a layer here of sand, say, and it's sandwiched between material of low permeability, then this layer has a thickness B and the sand has some hydraulic connectivity. So the resistance to bulk flow through this layer, how readily this layer can transmit water is going to be determined by the transmissivity and that's the product of the hydraulic connectivity and the thickness. So transmissivity is given by this formula it has units of length squared per time. It's just the units of K multiplied by length. And this will be important for characterizing the properties of layers. So we see these two, these two things, the hydraulic connectivity, we use big K to, to indicate that, and transmissivity, capital T. And 
these are both indicating a resistance to flow, but there's an important distinction because hydraulic conductivity, this is really a material property. It's, it's the property of the porous medium. Transmissivity though, this is a property of a layer. Okay? So we can get, we can have the transmissivity increase by either increasing the conductivity, the property of the porous media, or by making the layer thicker. Okay, so add those two terms, the transmissivity and hydraulic conductivity, to the list of things that you should know. So there's another term that you also should know, and that's typically denoted by this lowercase k. That's the permeability. Hydraulic conductivity is related to the permeability using this formula here. So there's the hydraulic conductivity on the left side, and it equals the permeability times that guy, gamma, which is the unit weight of water, or unit weight of the fluid, and that is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. So what we see is that the hydraulic conductivity equals the permeability and it times this stuff, which is a property of the fluid. So it turns out that the permeability is a property of the porous material, and this stuff that I circled is property of the fluid. So we see that the hydraulic conductivity, the flow rate per unit head gradient, is a, a result of, or a, a, it is affected by both the porous material through the permeability and the fluid that's flowing through the porous material. Okay, so that's an important distinction between hydraulic conductivity and permeability. Permeability, it only depends on the properties of the porous material. Hydraulic conductivity depends on both the material and the fluid. So permeability, we saw, um, we saw that hydraulic conductivity had units of length per time. Permeability has units of length squared. So sometimes you see it in, you, in terms of meters squared. Um, sometimes, though, you see permeability expressed in units of Darcy's. And it's because it's, it's the same Darcy. Uh, the unit of Darcy can be converted to uh, meters squared. There are this many um, square centimeters in a Darcy, and there's this many. This is approximately um, the this is probably approximately one Darcy in units of meters squared. I generally don't use Darcy in calculations. If I'm using permeability, it would be in meters squared. But you see Darcy used, and so here's the conversion. This is uh, the permeability of, uh, of sand, of, of kind of medium sand. Okay, so uh, we also need to look at some of these other terms. The dynamic viscosity of water, that's uh, given by this term here, mu. And the, di the, the dynamic viscosity, it's in units of centipoise, typically. Um, one centipoise equals one millipascal times a second. So a centipoise has units of um, pressure times time. And a, a convenient way to express this is uh, 1 centipoise is 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. And then unit weight, so unit weight is uh, that many, uh, 9810 pascals per meter. So these are the um, SI units for these terms. Okay, so Let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. Um, so we want to figure out what's the hydraulic conductivity of porous material.
that is one Darcy. So it'll be this permeability here. And we have water flowing through it. So water flowing through one Darcy has what hydraulic connectivity? So here's the conversion. And there's uh, one Darcy is 10 to the minus 12 meters squared per second. The unit weight is here and the viscosity is here. So the pressures cancel. That meter cancels with one of those. You do the multiplication out and you get this. And then we'll just round that. It's 9.8 times 10 to the minus 6 or round it to 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. So one Darcy, if, if water is flowing through this porous media, one Darcy is 10 to the minus 5 meters per second. So just keep that in mind as a kind of a benchmark reference value. Something that I think is convenient to have as part of your working vocabulary is some reference values of hydraulic connectivity. So here's a table that shows the hydraulic connectivity in a log scale for various different materials. So let's take a look here at soils and we have gravel, here sand, uh, fine sand, very fine sand, silt, and going down here into clay. So we go a wide range of grain sizes and if we assume that we have water flowing through this material and we can look up here at the hydraulic connectivity in centimeters per second. I would recommend that you know three reference materials, and they're shown here. This is medium grain sand right here. This is very fine grain sand or silt. And this is clay. So if you know K, those three materials, then you can have a good working knowledge of what hydraulic connectivity might be expected under a certain circumstance, or if you hear a value of hydraulic connectivity, you would know how that fits into this overall scale. So medium grain sand, if we look on this table, this is log of hydraulic connectivity, actually it's minus log there. So minus log two, that means the hydraulic connectivity of that stuff, according to this table, is 10 to the minus two, centimeters per second. This one is 10 to the minus 5 and 10 to the minus 7. Now, there are various different units that are used for hydraulic connectivity. I generally use meters per second. So this would be 10 to the minus 4 meters per second for sand. And silt would be it's 10 to the minus 5 centimeters per second, so that's 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. And clay would be 10 to the minus 9 meters per second. So the units are given here, of hydraulic connectivity, and also the units of um, permeability. Looks like we have a little bit of uh, wrap around here but um, hopefully that's not too confusing. So I would, I would go and, um, and memorize these values of hydraulic connectivity. That would be the baseline. You can also learn what they are in terms of permeability